everyone, it's Mia. One of the most frequently asked questions from my How to Buy iBonds video is how you would buy iBonds for a child under the age of 18. So in this follow-up video, I'll provide a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create a minor account in treasurydirect.gov so you can buy iBonds for a child or a grandchild. iBonds are currently paying 7.12% for the first six months of the bonds issued date. It's a great way to teach kids to save. If you haven't seen my video on how to buy iBonds, which goes into a lot more detail on how iBonds work and how you would set up an account at treasurydirect.gov, I'll include the link in the video description below. If you're new to my channel, I make videos on money, investing, and early retirement. I break personal finance topics down so they're easy to follow and understand. If you'd like to keep my channel as a resource library, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified of new uploads. Before we get into the tutorial, it's important to go over some things that you should consider before buying iBonds in a child's name, such as tax implications and whether or not it would make sense to buy iBonds for a child if you're saving for something like college. Keep in mind that I am not a tax professional or a financial advisor, and this is just my opinion. You should seek the advice of a tax professional or financial advisor who would take your individual circumstances into account. So in this video, we'll go over how minors can own iBonds, what a parent or guardian can do in a minor account, bonds versus 529 accounts for education, including impact on financial aid, tax treatment on the interest, and finally, we'll get into the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to actually create a minor account and buy iBonds from Treasury Direct. In general, children under the age of 18 can invest in stocks and bonds, not just iBonds. Because they are a minor, they cannot legally consent to the terms and conditions. So a parent or guardian who acts as a custodian can create an account and purchase investments on their behalf. The purchase limit for iBonds of $10,000 per calendar year also applies to minor accounts. Once you buy iBonds in a child's name, it is considered an irrevocable gift to the child and should be treated as such. The control of the account is handed over to the child at the age of 18 whether you want it or not. If you purchase an iBond for the child before the age of 18 and you decide to sell, Let's say either you find a more suitable investment that is outside of Treasury Direct or the child needs the cash for a special trip, that's perfectly fine. But when you open a Treasury Direct account in the name of the child, you should consider it a completed gift for the child. It becomes the child's money, not yours. If the intent is to buy extra iBonds for yourself, the adult, you should not be purchasing in your child's name. If you have a living trust, you can buy an additional $10,000 worth of iBonds through the trust. You can also overpay your taxes to ensure you get a tax refund where you can buy up to another $5,000 per calendar year. So what can a parent or guardian do in a minor account? As a custodian of the account, you can access the account at any time. You can buy and sell savings bonds and perform other transactions within the account on behalf of the minor. When your child turns 18 and establishes his or her own Treasury Direct account, you may delink the bonds into their new account. Delinking refers to moving the linked account's bonds to a separate primary Treasury Direct account. Once the minor account is delinked, it is deactivated and you will no longer be able to perform any transactions on the child's behalf. If you choose to maintain the minor account once the minor reaches 18, you are restricted from performing nearly all transactions. However, you can still purchase bonds on the child's behalf. iBonds versus 529 accounts for education expenses, including impact on financial aid. Before making an investment, always consider your goal and timeline. If your goal is to save for college for the child, a 529 account, which is made specifically for saving for college, is better since it is a tax-advantaged account. Any capital gains in the 529 account is tax-free when used for college. And if your child is young and has at least 10 years before they go off to college, investing in stocks may potentially give them a higher return than buying I-bonds. The stock market risk is reduced by the longer time frame since they can ride out any interim market downturns. In my opinion, and this is only my opinion, iBonds are a good choice if one, you want to help your child learn to save, and instead of giving them cash for their birthday or the holidays, you give them iBonds instead. Two, your child does not intend to attend college. Or three, if you know for a fact that your child would not qualify for financial aid because your income is too high iBonds are also good if you plan to use it for the benefit of the child for some anticipated cost in the future before the child's 15th birthday, such as a special school trip or to pay for a child's extracurricular activities. The reason why you would want to use the funds before the child's 15th birthday 
is because when a child applies for financial aid for college in their final year of high school, FAFSA will look at your income tax return from the two years prior, which is when they're about 15 or 16, and treasury bonds held in a child's name would count as a student's asset. And the FAFSA calculations would expect the student to contribute 20% of their assets to their own education. This is why if you're planning to save for college, and unless you know that your child will not qualify for any financial aid, a 529 account is the better option since 529s are considered parental assets and only a maximum of 5.64% of parental assets are expected to be used to contribute towards the child's college education. Additionally, capital gains from 529 accounts are not subject to the kitty tax or any taxes. I'll go into greater detail on the kitty tax in a little bit. Tax treatment on the interest. I-bonds owned under a child's name is subject to unearned income tax. This is known as tax on a child's investment and other unearned income, commonly referred to as the kitty tax. 529s are not subject to the kitty tax. For 2021, the first $1,100 of a child's unearned income qualifies for the standard deduction and is tax-free. Interest up to this amount does not have to pay taxes. Between $1,100 and $2,200, it's taxed at the child's tax rate, which starts at 10% if the child has no other earned income. Unearned income greater than $2,200 is taxed at the parent's normal marginal tax bracket. If your child has interest income greater than $2,200, you will need to file IRS Form 8615, Tax for Certain Children Who Have Unearned Income. For 2022, the first 11 50 of a child's unearned income qualifies for the standard deduction and is tax-free. Between 11 50 and 2300 it's taxed at the child's income tax rate. Income beyond $2,300 is taxed at the parent's normal marginal tax bracket. One of the benefits of having the savings bond in the parent's name as opposed to the child's name is that if your income is below a certain threshold, the interest earned on the bonds may be exempt from federal income tax if you use it for your child's qualifying education expenses. You or your spouse or both must own the bond. Your child may be a beneficiary, but they cannot be a co-owner. There are two ways to buy I-bonds for a child, paper bonds and electronic bonds. As an adult, you can buy a paper series I-bond for a minor through the tax time bond program using proceeds from your federal tax return. To buy I-bonds with your tax refund, use IRS Form 888. In Block 5B, you would enter the child's name. If you would like to be a co-owner, put your name in Block 5C. If you have another child that you would like to buy I-bonds for, you can put that in Block 6B, and if you have a co-owner, put that in Block 6C. Keep in mind that for co-owner accounts where the child is named as a primary owner and the parent is named as a secondary owner, the person who purchased it will be responsible for paying taxes. This is from the IRS which states the following regarding co-owned accounts. If a U.S. savings bond is issued in the names of co-owners, such as you and your child or you and your spouse, Interest on the bond generally is taxable to the co-owner who bought the bond. For electronic bond purchases, the parent or guardian will need to set up a minor linked account from the parent's treasury direct account. The only way to go to the minor's account is through the parent's account. To do this, first log into your treasury direct account. If you do not have an account created, check out my video, How to Buy iBonds, which shows you step by step how to create an account. The link to the video is in the description below. We're going to start at the Treasury Direct website. Click on the Treasury Direct link below account login. Click on the little orange login button. Enter your account number, then click submit. Now enter your password using the virtual keyboard. This is not case sensitive, then click submit. From here, we're going to go to the Manage Direct tab here and click on it. Then click on Establish a Minor Linked Account. From here, you will need to answer your security question, then click submit. Next, register the child's information. You will need to fill out the child's first name, optional middle name, and last name. Then enter the child's full social security number. You can give the account a name. Then select if you want to use your primary account address information or if you want to register a different address for the child. Then scroll down and review the bank information. There's a note here that tells you how you can add a different bank account after account registration. Make sure you read through it.
Check the box to certify that the information is true and correct and that the child doesn't owe any backup withholdings. Then click Submit. Now review the account information to make sure that everything is correct. Then scroll down and click Submit. The account is now set up. Now go up to the upper right hand corner here and select the account number next to your name. From here, click on Access My Linked Account to buy iBonds. Select the account that you want to buy bonds for, then click Submit. Now go to the top and click on the Buy Direct tab. Select the Series I Savings Bonds, then click Submit. The registration should automatically have the child's name. If you want to register it differently, such as having a co-owner or beneficiary, click on Add New Registration. Enter the amount that you want to purchase and make sure that the correct bank account is selected. Pick the date that you want to make the purchase, then click Submit. Review your purchase, then click Submit. This is just the confirmation page. You should be all set. Once your child reaches the age of 18, you can delink the account by clicking on Delink a linked account here. Select the account that you want to delink, then click Submit. Your child will need to create their own Treasury Direct account. Once their account has been created, they will have their own account number, which you will enter here. Then click Submit. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Check out these other videos and let me know in the comment below if you have any questions.